by your popular request today, finally getting my hands on the Imagine 22 RBE. Yeah, you know me. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bishop's RV down here at Grand Design today. Uh, again, at your popular request, getting my hands on the 22 RBE. This is a model I've had so many requests for, and it's not that I haven't wanted to do it, guys. I just haven't had the opportunity, but Grand Design helped make that happen. So leave us a little note in the comments. Let them know that you appreciate the efforts here. Tell them thanks, Grand Design. So this model is something, if you're looking at it, it's, uh, it's a little bit different. It's a lot like me. It's a little left to center, if you will. And uh, this RV, it's almost inverted the living room and the kitchen it's almost inverted of what you constantly expect a lot of people ask in these sh why do manufacturers always put the windows on the uh the driver's side of the rv i want to see my campsite not the neighbors um the funny thing is the entry door is the reason you can flip flop anything in the floor plan easily but not the entry door but they figured a way around it here and what's crafty is they actually use the same kitchen out of something like the 2500 rear living they managed to squeeze it in this sucker and this thing has just it's got a great kitchen great entertainment you have awesome campsite window coverage now some people are going to say yeah but uh i i'm going to lose space on my campsite with a window on that or with a slide on that side you actually do not, because since there's no slide on the driver's side, you can park closer to that edge of your campsite. You will actually make your campsite look bigger with this. Now, every RV has pluses and minuses. I think the single major biggest drawback potentially to this one is that you do have a slide, albeit a shallow slide, but you do have a slide under the awning over here on the door side of the RV. And that does take away from some of your patio awning space. Is it too much? I'm gonna let you be the judge of that. And I'm gonna show this in road mode. I'm gonna open the slides. I'm gonna do everything I can to kind of help you find your second RV the first time. And if you appreciate how we break away from the office and do our best to fulfill all those requests that we get, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new with us, like our video, and let's get in there. We'll see what's good, bad, ugly, and in between. And it feels appropriate to start over here on the door side of the RV. One, to help you get your bearings, but two, to really highlight one of the coolest things on this RV. It puts windows on the door side of the RV, which is something very few models this size really do uh, effectively, you know. Now, um, it comes with a caveat. It comes with the caveat that you have a slide out on the door side of the RV, potentially um, you could say in the way of some things, but we're going to dive into that in more detail later. First of all, if you plop down at the sofa over here, this would kind of be your point of view. And I, I gotta tell you, I, I don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that Grand Design is really quickly becoming, uh, and maybe not quickly, has. They quickly became and still hold the rank of one of the, the, the best brands out there in terms of maximizing storage. Now, the uh, it, it's, it's interesting here they extended the countertop down below the entertainment center, which creates this huge prep space. It does mean that the TV's up a little high. It is nice. That's a TCL Roku smart TV, though, so you can keep up on your Netflix action. Or if you're more in the Amazon Prime and commitment phase instead of Netflix and chill phase of your life, you know. Um, if, you're, if you're kind of in between, you're probably watching Hulu. So, can, you know, uh, if the shoe fits. <laughs> And what I love is there's not just about an acre of countertop space in here. It's the fact that you have some easy reach household outlets, which is something that they're not able to do in all the imagined floor plans. They're able to do it here because that is a hollow interior wall as opposed to a laminated exterior wall. So it's very easy to run wiring through there. Um, moving forward here, past that big wide open sliding door. One of the things, and I'm gonna flicker some lights here real quick, by the way, so if you're light sensitive, keep that in mind. Right when you walk in the door, your ceiling lights have their own handy dandy little switch. Although, obviously, you can just reach up and tippity tap those little, uh, you know, reading kind of lights there. Now, this is a 60 by 80 true queen. I really appreciate personally the fact they didn't go with the short camp queen. Uh, now, the RV that I tend to personally use the most actually has a camp queen. And do my feet hang off the bed? Yeah, 
And the bed goblins chew on my toenails. I got to make sure that I don't trim my toenails for a couple weeks before I go camping. Otherwise, they're going to chew me down to the quick. But I don't have to really worry about that too much because I plan ahead. Now, uh, surprise weekend trips, that can be a bit of a trick. Uh, one of the other things that I really, really like over here is you see these headboard power pockets. Um, now, both sides of the bed have them. They're very good about putting symmetry into these floor plans. Now, notice too, it does come with a handy bed spread. I kind of just... I thought I'd let you know. It's actually not too terrible of a bedspread. Um, but it, it's kind of nice sometimes to be able to see the mattress to get an idea of like the, the grade and the quality. And overall, it's kind of a backbreaker death wafer. It's not the worst I've ever experienced. It's certainly not the best. But a lot of people replace mattresses anyway. But those headboard power pockets with household and USB plugs. Uh, uh, two different types of United States Bs, by the way. Uh, USB Type A, the, the rectangular variety. And uh, a USB Type-C, the tiny little oval variety. So they're doing a little bit of both. They're also doing dresser drawers on both sides of the bed with some, uh, you know, that what I call, uh, like, it, it, uh, well, I don't call it auto-close doors above the bed because they hold themselves open. Down below the bed, uh, you've got this little sliding kind of thing that can get out of the way if you need it to. It's great for small, lightweight stuff. Um, the, uh, the thing is, this floor plan, if you get it with the sofa, uh, you need a place to eat. So the table actually stores down there for transit. Now, once again, like I said, when it comes to the kitchen, they really maximized the storage space. Now, if you're going to do some serious prep work, I don't think it's impossible for you to, to maybe occasionally bump your way in front of that television right there. But for the most part, I think the TV is off to the side that you might reach over and set stuff there or like serve something there or leave it there if you want to, you know, get up and get some extras. But I, I don't think it's really going to be too much in the way. That's my two cents, though. Man, I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. That's just kind of how I see it on this one. Um, now, that refrigerator, that is a 12-volt DC compressor fridge, you saw how that table, it can kind of convert from, like, uh, dining to picnic table to, it can even raise up to, technically above, but countertop height to be additional prep space if you really, really need it. Um, but I like the fact that it's free-floating. You can take it outside. Now, I'm sliding back here in the bedroom because I noticed something interesting. <clears throat> Your tankless on-demand water heater controls are up in here, up in here. I, that, I, I don't know. It just seems, is it, I mean, I suppose it works, but like, I don't know. I don't know. Is it? Is that a good spot? Is that a bad spot? Is it just weird? Am I just weird? Am I just, I'm just weird, right? Okay, I'm weird. So anyway, uh, porcelain foot flush stool with awesome sauce uh hip leg shoulder elbow room all kinds of things now you saw um in the living room area how we did have those blackout roller shades you'll find those through the entire rv including the bedroom and uh back here in that rear bathroom window now this is a six and a half foot tall camper with the skylight i can stand in it just fine but that's with the skylight. You have to step up into the shower for some plumbing code reasons, basically, in travel trailers, unless they wanted to cut a giant hole in the floor that I don't think a lot of people would be very interested in. Um, so that does mean that uh, if you're a little over six foot like me, your head's going to be in the bubble. Thankfully, they put a pretty big skylight in there, and it works well. That is the dollar store variety uh, bathroom fan, but you could certainly upgrade that. And when we get over here... Um, I, I mean, I don't normally open a lot of storage live on camera, but I, I really like the fact they put that monster drawer right here. That's actually big enough, like, if you have hair dryers and, and, and things that you need for your bathroom, you can. And space for a wastebasket in a bathroom is something I personally really, really like, and I, and I like looking for a giant bathroom counter because what's interesting is this is, like, this is above, I think, the water heater, the tankless on-demand water heater. So they had to build the counter out to be above that. And this is what I'm going to call Lipitorge storage galorge. Now, you could put your towels in that open face linen cabinet beside the shower. But that thing up there is frankly deep enough. I think you could put some towels up there, too, if you really had to. What is a very pleasant surprise on this one, though, is that it has dynamite road mode traveling function because keep in mind i'm standing in the bedroom right now uh we can clearly see the entry door so uh an overnight stay over if you need to sleep it off or something easy to do or if you pull in late at night and you just want to get in and sleep you don't have to open the slide you don't have to set up the rv you don't even have to put down the stabilizers the jacks anything like that the kitchen is 
fully functional. The bathroom is readily available. You don't even got to do a sideways travel trailer two-step. The only thing you really shouldn't do is basically occupy the slide while it's closed. And that's an extra piece of information I'm trying to get out there. Like I've made a video, can you, can you not use your slide when, the, uh, when it's closed? And the answer is really, I can never recommend that you do that. And here's why. No slide supplier, no RV manufacturer in the total industry of which I am aware tests to see if you can physically occupy or cargo load a slide while it's retracted because the inside edge of the floor is not supported the way it is when it's extended fully. Now, motorized RVs are different, but in the towable RV industry, if the manufacturers aren't testing and guaranteeing with their warranty, then nobody can reasonably step up and say, yes, you can. And if somebody, if you're, it's okay if you're not always buying from Bish's RV. I get that people watch this and don't buy from Bish's RV. But if somebody else says, oh no, you definitely can, get that in writing. Because if something fails, you're gonna need them to be on the hook. Otherwise, you're gonna eat the repair bill. Now, right away, one of the first things I wanna kinda discuss is most RVs, like this is a different floor plan behind us, have slides on the driver's side, or uh, the technical term for that is the poop side of the camper. Um, this one though, if you look at it at a glance, it actually looks like a nose slide RV because obviously the slide's over on the driver's side. But keep in mind, when you see this blank uh, vanilla wall over here, I think that helps drive home the fact that you don't lose campsite space. Um, you can park closer to the edge of your campsite. You don't have to deal with that slide out overlap. Now, you may run into situations uh, where your campsite hookups might prevent that. Like, it's, I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm saying that in general, though, especially a trailer this size, you should be able to park and maneuver the RV to really maximize your available, um, you know, campsite space and, and potentially even gain a little bit that you otherwise wouldn't have. So get my fat nugget out of the way here. What are we looking at on this thing? Well, taking another look at the weights and the measures, I do think this is a reasonable candidate for some half ton towability. Obviously, that me is uh, subject to the exact capacities of the exact vehicle in question. Whenever someone says half ton towable, you can't take it just as general gospel. Now, if you're looking at a, uh, a pop-up camper and someone says half ton towable, that's different. When you're looking at a trailer like this, it's different. Um, this is the XLS series, which does have magnet holdbacks. It does not include the slam latches of Big Brother Full Imagine. Um, it does, however, I like this big full pass-through they have in here. We are prepped for tire pressure monitoring. We've got that simple kind of privatized docking station there. And consider the fact, I'm over on the driver's side of the RV. You do have a full pass-through on this sucker. You also have motion-activated lighting available on both sides of that big pass-through, which I think is very cool. 20-pound uh, propane tanks, uh, easier to change out on a Sunday. Ooh, I'm tripping over something over here. Easier to change out on a Sunday if everything's closed. There's probably still a gas station where you could swap a cylinder if, you know, you really, really need to. Um, the 30-pound uh, tanks, they last longer. You could probably upfit 30-pound tanks on this. You just have to get a longer uh, rod for your little... Um, propane regulator to, to get up there. Now, again, we are in the XLS series. This is the middle of the Imagine family. You do have an aluminum uh, nose sweep instead of the fiberglass cap like on the, uh, the Big Brother full Imagine over there. Uh, one thing I want to mention, though, is that is an extra thick nose skin so that it doesn't get, like, you know, dented inward and, and buffeted by, by wind. Now, um, this has the same weather package, though, as the, uh, the Big Brother Imagine. You've got a radiant barrier that starts at the roof, wraps down the nose, goes through the belly. They actually laminate the radiant barrier to that belly skin, which is interesting, so it doesn't, uh, you know, slide around. Um, and it is forced air heated below, uh, a, uh, a very solid extended season camping package. But really, I think one of the, I, I, probably the major question to answer out here, how much space is there when the awnings open? And I say this often, I don't feel I'm the authority on something. I, I, I think that you folks who actually watch the, I'm tripping on stuff again, uh, who actually watch these videos, who go camping, I think, you know, the people who might buy the RV, I think you're the real authority and decision maker. You tell me, do you think there's still enough functional patio space here or not? Now, one of the things that is helping is that is not a full three-foot deep slide. It is a shallow slide, just deep enough for the seating. 
Um, I think it splits the difference nicely. One of the other cool things here, I don't talk about this as often lately because I don't tend to open as many awnings as I used to. This is an easy two finger adjust awning. That's all it takes. It takes a little bit of pulling, obviously, but if you want to put a little bit of a pitch and a tilt uh, on that awning, uh, you know, for some rain runoff, you can do that. Or if there's a little bit of water pooled up on it and somebody's sitting under one side of it, pull down on that awning arm and give them a, uh, a refreshing little uh, morning shower, you know. Maybe that's something that they, uh, they they might enjoy. They might even thank you for it. Probably not. I do like how the door's in the middle of the awning, though, because that does mean that on, like, a rainy day, you can pop out here and, like, not get spritzed in the face. The door can completely open without cracking an awning arm because the thing with these awning arms, they're designed to take loads vertically, not horizontally. If you start pushing that awning arm sideways, she's done, son. It's gonna get uh, it's gonna get torqued like Miley's, Miley Cyrus. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Anyway, um, Goodyear endurance radials. These are prepped for TPMS. Um, one of the other factors to maybe consider because they do their awning lighting at the base of the awning. You are losing out on a chunk of your awning lighting with this campside slide design. Again, I'm not saying this is the ideal trailer for everybody. I, I said right from the very start, this has ups and it has downs, kind of like chutes and ladders, ladies and gentlemen. But overall, I think it's kind of neat. Then again, I, I see the same thing so often all the time. When I get a chance to see something different, I pounce on it, just, just like a tiger. It's It, it works for me. In the past here, you might have noticed the, the blue coily hose with the garden sprayer head. That could attach on here. That sucker was uh, on there. Holy crap. Um, and it doesn't have a camp kitchen, but it does still have the propane cooker hooker coming off the side here. And if you notice, once again, on a rainy day, you have the choice because of where that's located. You could uh, pop out the door and cook under the awning and keep all the, the cooking smells and whatnot out of the RV and all the extra humidity and moisture and heat and all that. Um, or you could choose to like set a grill or a grill or something uh, like back here with a picnic table, whatever might work for you. It's, it's really kind of your choice. It's like Burger King. You can have it your way, I guess. Uh, tankless on-demand water heater. Anybody with experience with those, do you like them? Do you dislike them? Do you prefer it over a traditional water heater? I don't have a lot of personal usage experience with those. And that is where, once again, I really rely on you folks, the audience, the experienced RVers out there. Let's do a little crowd sharing knowledge on that. Um, now the RV is not exactly level. So there's a little extra clearance under these sewer hookups than there maybe necessarily should be, but it is pretty darn good right there. And um, black tank uh, flush on that rear corner, by the way. Also, uh, climbing you up, topping that ladder, giving you a little look around here. The roof does include a roof attic vent, so all the heat building up inside your roof structure can ventilate out. You know what's really interesting about that? That is residential code. In, in a house, you have to ventilate certain aspects of your attic uh, for safety reasons. In an RV, manufacturers don't. I appreciate that they're doing something here they don't have to do, but it definitely improves the camping experience. So if conventional isn't really your speed and you're looking for something a little backwards, I don't know, this might just be that little one that you've been looking for, the one that just, uh, you know, was elusive to uh, all your other searches. I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm searching for words here, apparently. They're, <laughs> well, being elusive. <laughs> Let me know what you think about it. Good, bad, ugly in between, just like I've done for you. I'll leave you a link in the video description. You can check availability. You can see where we have one parked. You can check individual MSRP with the way they're built. Grand Design does not let us publish a discounted sale price that we do most definitely offer. Uh, and we are not fee ridden. Um, you know, we, we don't do the hidden dealer fees, the junk fees on stuff. Our, our price tags, the price tag. Just add tax, title, license, state fees, things like that. And we would include that, frankly, up front if we could, but every buyer from a different state could be subject to different tax codes. So that's the one thing we can't do. Short of that though, if you appreciate all the efforts here, hit that subscribe button. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.